some of the more advanced things that we're going to do in the next assignment. But uh, we actually left off a very fun spot last time. We a little making up and exploit where we were. We're doing some cool stuff. Can anybody summarize what we were doing? I think at least some of you were here. There's some little intersection between the two people. So you were exploiting a buffer overflow. And you would like jump back to your code and run it with some arguments that you were also passing. Yeah. And there was something more complicated. You were calling the system with yeah. uh, our own argument, which was a pointer to our own shell code, I believe. It was the bin.sh slash bin dot slash slash Right. It was not really shell code per se. It was like just an argument to the system. So instead of actually us providing machine code to the application, we just told it to use some of its pre-existing applications, okay? which is effectively like us saying, uh, yeah, actually you were just in the middle of calling system with this, this wrong argument over here. And the machine's like, oh, okay, I'll just execute that, right? And the trick that we needed to do there was to say that, like, well, we're actually returning into a function instead of actually calling it, so we need to worry about this shift. Remember the shift that we had to put in, like, this 4A, so we can what? Okay. Just call in. Just call in. The call function. Yeah. I'll push you something into the stock. Right? It was currently need something. So, so we're off by four bytes, and the arguments are imagined to be at these locations: A, B, B, P, to all these things over. So we have to just make sure that things kind of look the same. Now, we were beginning to do something more fun. Remember, we sat down. Or I joined you guys in sitting down. And uh, we started to make a little overflow. And we successfully had the program run system. And yet, we're going to gain no extra privileges. It's kind of a bummer. Do you remember what was going on? And then this archaeology is the recall purpose. It's all what, what happened? We ran a system. We actually made a program that had extra privileges, spawn a shell, and we gained nothing. Why is the world so unfair? Did we get access to the user We got no extra access beyond what we previously had. Because we ran this thing as femur. And it's like, boop, 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 shell, humor. And uh, like, yay, but it's just that fast, right? It's the running exploit. But we were actually running a program that was run under the context of root. And for most of what it's doing, it's got root privileges and can kill anyone, spy on anyone, do all this like crazy stuff. But there was this thing that when it spawns up a shell, when it calls system, actually what system does is that it calls exec VE on the following. So here's my notepad it does the following like so system of like flugel doofel is the same thing as saying slash pin slash sh minus c flugel doofel so if i say system bin sh which is what we did actually we did this and then ah, some other crap here um it's going to try to do bin sh slash c bin sh because that's what it does and remember that bin s is annoying in that it's a shell that when it realizes that it's being run under kind of root context, but not by a root user, then it's just going to shed those extra privileges and go back to that original user. So the first bin s over here is just going to ensure that I'm emer, and then respond to the shell, and that shell just knows nothing else. And says, no, you're just this emer guy. Right? 
I have gained no superpowers. This is a bummer. Our hero has fallen. Well, we need to do something about this. So, of course, relentlessly, we're not going to give up, right? We are going to defeat this. So, I need ideas. How are we going to overcome this? Remember, recall that the reason why we're not running a machine code is because yeah, you can't run we can't anymore. Like there's a protection against it. Protection works. As, how does the protection work? Not like it. Yeah, everything that we are able to inject as data is not going to be executable machine code. Right? It's either executable or it's writable. Never both at once. This was touted as the way to defeat this threat. We have just started to think of ways of overcoming it. Yes? So you said last time that in the heap, in the beginning, it stored all your user information. So can I just overwrite the The environment table, you mean? Yeah. So, it's, so it's at the bottom of the stack. So it's not on the heap. Like so can we just overwrite who the user is then? So, so the thing is that it's just a copy of the information that's there. Even if you overwrite it, like we can change it to whatever we want. Oh, yeah, but it is that. not what the operator uses to determine whether or not you're this user. It would be very really nice for hackers if that was the case. I'm sure at some point that was the case. Um, but it's more kind of, that would be like how Microsoft designs their software. Right? Um, it's not the case for, for Unix. Why do you do this? Uh, it's power saving, but I'm teaching. Okay. Um, all right. So we're going to need some, some ideas. So that's that's an idea, but yeah, unfortunately, that's not going to fly. Any other ideas? Back row. Second to back row. Which I call it right. The penultimate row? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a movie. Terrible movie. Next row. So the, so the row major or column major? Anyone? <laughs> Any ideas? Well, what can we do? Like, so we're able to redirect the program to go to places that of code that already exists. Maybe like in the user verification program, or like the program it uses to log in and like register a user, can you skip to the end of that? But the thing is that we're in like we're currently in a particular program and we're stuck in that program context, right? And that program cannot actually inflict anything on any other program in the system. But we could run up something. We could well we could call a system and we could maybe tell it to run login or something. But by the time we're there, we've already set all the extra privileges that we could have gotten. Well, that's a problem. Right. Yeah. Can you like piece the other code somehow by redirecting to a bunch of other? Oh, so how does that work? That's a very interesting idea. What do you want to piece together? I guess you have to use the standard shell code that we wrote before. So you would piece it together by a very interesting proposition. Uh, I guess it would be jumping to different you know points in the heap that when combined would make you know, something. <coughs> Yeah, very, very question. Yeah, so I should have brought my charger, huh? Anybody have a tell charger? No? Okay. Um, let's think about this a little bit. Um, so we're in a situation where our exploit looked like this, right? We had, um, uh, what does it look like? We turn the system, so we put in a, a system return address, and then we put our argument here for finish saves. <coughs> and then after it finished system, so we put something else there. What uh, what would the program do next? So suppose instead of this being system, it's like printer. What would the program do next? Done executing system and then what? Sorry? Then call printf and 
So in code print dev, and the also stuff, and it created its own stack frame, and it had a life of its own, and everything is great there to the left. And then finally, when it was done with that, what would it try to do next? Ultimately, print dev must return. All good things will die, right? So it will return, and well, where will it return to? So however we got it to print that must have come there because we returned into it. So that return ate up this parameter. Okay? And the first thing that we did in print that was to push hmm? We pushed a, a register. Frame <coughs> pointer. Frame pointer. Frame pointer went to the stack. And then all our variables, we created a stack frame, we covered the functions, we did all the struggling and so forth. And then ultimately, the next thing we did in the program was to pop the frame pointer off and <coughs> return. return. What, where are we returning? Cute color change. Okay, this is going to be maximally annoying, isn't it? So the sequence of things that happens is that this got devoured, new stuff came here about, and this became effectively a frame pointer because it got pushed here. And then we popped that off, and where is our return address from the program? The next thing on the stack, right? Frame pointer, return address, right? So the four A's is our next return address, right? So you're, you're just proposing that we could maybe chain together different things. What if we didn't just want to call system, we wanted to call some more stuff, right? Print stuff out and like maybe have a little game or whatever, and then call system, right? Just for fun. So then, in some sense, we could call a function here, and maybe a different function here, right? No? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. It's completely unclear. There's, is there anything here that would break that? Like, I mean, why would that not be allowed? You guys are very skeptical. Is it because I'm cynical? <coughs> is there something I'm missing? <laughs> um, so there's, there's nothing wrong with that. This thing here, if it was another function, it would return it. In fact, if system fails, Right here, you're going to see a segmentation fault at 41414 because it's trying to return to that address. Ah, I did it remotely. This is actually a fully flexed keyboard. If you hack this thing so that it actually uh, sends other um, sends other key codes because it's just sending key codes for like next and friend. You could actually take over somebody's presentation and type stuff into the terminal or rubber ducky then, maybe kind of rubber ducky. So like a little USB device, like a USB key, you plug it in, but it pretends to be a USB keyboard. And then when this gets plugged in, it starts entering like control escape, open up command prompt, download this stuff from the internet, set up malware, close the window. Happens in like a second or something, so like go to the dentist or something like that, put something in, and uh, yeah, you're on the computer. So you could do that remotely if you uh, took over this thing here. There's a little bit of encryption on it, but there's nothing. Anyway, that was a little advertising break. Right. Back, back to the subject at hand. Four days over here. So we could put something else here. And we took it somewhere else. How far? How often can we do this? What would the problem be that you have to put the argument to the system call immediately after that? So yeah, so the next thing to return to would be the string in this age. So like the address of where bin is located. So you're kind of like in a weird spot, right? So effectively what you manage to do is to interleave 
the following here. You're able to say like, hey, I want to get to like system. We can even say like, first I want to go to like printf, and then I want to go to system, and then there's the arg for printf, and then the arg for system, right? If I need two arguments for something like printf, well, then I'm bad shape. Uh, if I need, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of bad like this, right? So it can call two things, effectively, it's what we've determined so far, right? How is that useful? What would I like to call? So recall that in this age it's going to shed privileges if the effective user ID is different from the real user ID. So if I call the function set UID and say like, oh, actually I just want to be rude, but I want to feel like being like, like <laughs> what's it called, Jekyll and Hyde type of character. I want to just be rude to who I really am and fulfill my potential. So set your ID allows you to do this. It's set your ID zero, and now fully administrator. So if I call pin this age, it's like, oh, it's just root two wants to shell here's a shell. Right? So it'd be nice if I could call set your ID and then system, right? But the argument to set your ID is you know, the user ID, and it's like four zeros, right? It's pretty tough. So our ideal exploit for what we want to do it looks a little bit like this. Here's set to ID. And here's system. And here's like uh, zeros. And then arguments for system. And this is like a, I guess, bin this age pointer. This is what we want. And we'll be in good shape. <laughs> right? Um, Why are we restricted by two? We're restricted because we run into our arguments, right? Suppose instead of jumping to these functions here, suppose we can just pick an instruction, or maybe two instructions that we can just run. Somebody like graciously gives us this lifeline on, on the show, and like there are two instructions that we're just going to run. Can we somehow expand and not just have two calls over here? Could you do a jump to an address and jump earlier in your code? Yeah, if this were like an actual shell code, that's kind of what we were doing. We we're doing all these jumps, right? But we want something similar to like a jump, right? What are we trying to jump over? Arguments. Yeah, but they're all on the stack. Okay. <coughs> They're on the stack, right? They're at the very top of the stack, right? And we want to somehow get <coughs> rid of them. Yes, we want to silently annihilate them. <coughs> sure. What does our hitman do? Pop them. Pop it like it's hot. There we go. Yeah. So, our magic command, if we were to be able to ask some oracle for our magic command to run, would <coughs> pop some of the stuff off the stack, right? Because we can keep writing. Okay. Um, so, hold on a second. What does this look like? What are we trying to do? We can put in here, we can put in here, like, a, here's an address, and here's an address. We can, here's, like, an argument. And we can keep going like this, but let's suppose there's one argument, and we would like to keep going with another system call over here. What do I need to fill in? So one of these is going to have to be like, <coughs> yeah, what is this? What does POC really do? Suppose one of these addresses was a POC. It's a, uh, meaning that it's like, it's a pointer to some part of the program that, say, pops it to EBX, right? Here's somewhere in the program where this happens. Somewhere where you can actually execute that, right? 
How would this be fruitful? When would this be fruitful? This means that we've already kind of done rat, and we've done rat into this address over here. So this is the next thing on the stack. We popped it into register. How, how do we get back to what we want to do? So we save it in register, but somehow we wanted to get back to what we were doing, which is to kind of just move to the next address over here. Because okay? we're effectively now listed a whole bunch of things and a whole bunch of arguments interleaved between them of things we want to get done. Right? Except what we did now is that we moved into part of the program where there was at least one pop operation and then whatever else, right? We've lost control. How do we regain control? We do like another pop operation after that to push something that we actually want off of that. So, this is a pop or push, right? So you wanted to push here and then it's like magic. Right? Onto like the stack. Is this thing likely to exist in the program? You pop something, and you magically push the one value that you were that you feel entitled to have somewhere in memory. Four bytes. Hmm? So you need this. Suppose this wasn't here. What would happen? So what have we done here? So effectively, we use, suppose that this address over here goes to a part of the program where we have a pop and the return. Then what's going to happen? It's going to be like, okay, I'm going over here, so now my stack pointer is right here. And then pops this up, almost makes this sound. And then we're into this address over here, and we call a rat, so we can return to this address. Ooh, what have we accomplished? Jump over that argument. We've jumped over the argument, so we can keep going with our with our stash of illicit uh, functions and function blocks, right? Ooh, you guys have just invented return-oriented programming. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very good. Not bad for our day's work. So what is what are we doing? So let's take a little recap here. Suppose I have some other function over here. I have a function. Um, that's a good one. I have a fucking string copy which has two arguments. So it's like destination and source. So it means that like if I wanted to return to that, I want to have a chain that looks like string copy, arc one, arc two, and then next stuff, right? Is, that, is this correct? What is wrong with this line here? What's wrong with this line? Is this going to be interpreted as argument over one? What is missing? Something in between, right? Something so that it becomes 8 EDP, right? And 12 EDP. Just like before, right? From string copy's point of view, when we returned into it, this was the base of our, base of our stack, right? And so now I'm just going to push EDP over here, and then it's going to go ADP is the argument one, 12 ADP is argument number two, and so forth, right? So we're missing that. So what should this A be if we wanted to get the next stuff? What should it point to? And if it's pop L, EPX, and then return, it's going to go and it's going to pop argument one off, and then return to argument two. Ah, double pop. Ooh, pop up red. Cool, huh? So now we can get past two arguments as well. 
This is pretty generic. In fact, one can show that you can compute any Turing, uh, this is Turing complete. It can compute any computable function with non-executable stack and everything like maximum protections. You can do whatever you want that a computer can do using return on your program. Yes, it's fun to be a happy resistant. This is how exploits are done today. So, let me inundate you with a few slides just to give you a kind of a second view of what we're doing. So you're pulling work here. Um, and um, enjoy your few tricks. And then we're just going to write an exploit with this. Sound good? <coughs> In fact, we're going to turn to the system business again. We want to get that system to work. So somehow we want to get the full privileges, right? Okay, okay so business age, this we already talked about. You could plant the business age string in your buffer. You could find it in the memory somewhere. Um, you can uh, reuse a pointer and stack, which is kind of a fun thing. So this is what we did last time. Uh, so there's nothing new here. Here's a way to just find. Then it's somewhere in the libraries. So if you want to find a fixed address, and if the library is, um, is allocated a fixed address, you can just always use that function. Um, okay, let's see. So what's fun to show you here? Here's another fun thing to show you. Because of excessive hacking, <coughs> Linux libraries, and actually many others, they're trying to make it harder to do this kind of return to libc technique. The way they did that was to say, like, let's allocate all the library stuff so that it has a null byte in the address. <laughs> right? Because we know that it's a, an impediment to our success. So indeed, system is actually located at, in some cases, this address over here, with this poison null byte. Now remember how little MVM works. So null byte is like the last thing you hear gets written. So have a look at um, what we can do. If it so turns out that the argument to the function that's vulnerable contains a pointer to the buffer that we control or contains something that's useful, maybe it's just a, a pointer to a business age or, or it's probably our buffer, then if I just copy in whole bunch of A's, I guess at the beginning here it has to be business age, and then I put in the address of the system, the last byte of which will automatically be zero because of string copy. I'm actually good to go. Yeah? There's no way that they would like actually do that, right? When that, I mean, Th this can happen. It's more of a kind of theoretical result, right? You would need, what would need to happen here is that somehow <coughs> magically you could, uh, you could get by with one function and, and we found that system was not enough. And that the first argument, so this is actually, this is actually uh, uh, showing off an exploit against one of the programs that we used to use in this course. Right? And uh, it just so happened that it had a really simple exploit. It was, it was accidental, but it just showed the, the kinds of things that came up. Um, and so the, the first argument to the actual function contained everything that you needed as an argument to the system. It's just showing that like this notebook thing here, there are some fun tricks. You remember I told you that they were off by one over four, right? This is how they work. The null byte here overrides usually a, an old frame pointer. And when it overrides the old frame pointer, you've shifted all your stuff in your stack. And then all the references that are made after that are all over the place. Either in this stack room or the next stack room where your base pointer is all so screwed, right? So this is kind of what we're we're getting, to, where we're going, right? We were saying that like we would like to have set to ID, we'd like it to be zero somehow, and then we'd like to run system with finish as an argument. And we encountered the difficulty that the set to ID argument had to be all zeros, right? And then we found that like, well, okay, we have this thing called pop up rat or pop rat. It's called ESP lifting. Which just allows us to go in here and say, hey, you set your ID, and here's supposed to be my zero. And then there's a return address over here. And the return address actually is going to be the pop up rat, which is going to eat this, eat this. I guess, or if it's just pop rat, I guess, then it's just going to eat this and then go to system. The system is going to run the stage. 
And if that fails, we can just put the X in for computer really quick. <coughs> so let's do this. So my question out to you is about these zeros over here. This is gone. Here are my four zeros. How on earth are we going to try to get zeros into this? I don't know. <coughs> Calling on all available soldiers. You have to like generate a zero. Um, you could like subtract to registers or something and then push that or you have to something you have to sort. Does that make sense? So the issue is that by the time we need them, we must have returned into set to ID as a part of our chain. And eight bytes away from EVP at that time, there should be four zeros. We can't really put in a register. It has to somehow live on the right place in the stack. Right? And we're a little bit limited because we're kind of like, we've taken the program, we've shredded the pieces, turned it into kind of a ransom node, and we've just kind of orchestrated with the two stuff that we wanted, right? It's like rewriting ransom notes and rewriting ransom notes. Good. Good that one. Um, so, we're reusing things that are already in the program. So it's not as if we're going to find an instruction that's magically it's going to be like, oh, write a zero at an arbitrary location on your choice and then return. Mm -hmm. You're bound by much smaller sets of instructions. You're bound by anything that ends with rat, per se, which is a one byte instruction, C3. So you can actually look at the program and you can find C3 and find anything that precedes it, and all of those could be potential instructions. Because if you return to them, they do whatever they interpret it to be doing, and then return. Okay? In any case, we can chain them together. So that's where our power lies. And we're going to chain together stuff to create four zeros. So help you out. <coughs> And somehow you need to get that register to get to exactly the right memory address, or somehow deeper down in the stack, right? And the problem is that as soon as I, in my chain, start to push stuff onto the stack, then once I return, I'm back into the return mode, right? And I'm kind of, I'm stepping on my own toes. And call a friend. There's only live lines here. Or 50-50. Innocent. Pop and push. Ideas. How would I try to get a zero into some place in memory? If I could call whatever code I want, any function that I want, any library call in fact that I want, as long as it doesn't have an all button in it, kind of point. What would I want to call to generate, let's say, a single zero? A single zero. That's what I'm looking hmm? Mem copy I hear. How would you do it with mem copy? What does mem copy do? So this is a good thing. So let's. Let's, let's open up uh, shell here, and we're just going to do man mem copy. So mem copy is in the library. There's a manual page so it has to be in the library. It exists somewhere. If it is used by the programmer attacking, then there's going to be a PLT reference for it, which has no multi, but the program link is stable. So we could use that as an actual address. And it has three arguments. It has a destination, source, and then a size. A four byte number. It's in and of itself probably needs to contain at least one zero. Otherwise, you're trying to copy like more than like some gigabytes of memory. Right? 
What's this more like? <coughs> But suppose that wasn't an issue. What would you be copying? Find some zeros. Somewhere. Find some place that has zeros, which is ample. That's there's so many pages full of zeros. That would be our source. And what is our destination? Hmm? Where do we want them? Right there. When do we want them? <laughs> no. Um, yeah. So on the stack itself, right? So we just put in the pointer to the location on the stack, where we're executing, where we want to get zeros, right? Mm -hmm. This would be awesome, right? The problem here is the, uh, the size of argument, right? Because we don't want to just overwrite everything in the world. We want to keep our chain. We want exactly one zero, or, or four if we could, but that's also tricky. What could we do? Anything else that might not be exactly one zero? Hint, the answer is on the screen. String copy? Mm, what does string copy do? Let's find out. Man, string copy. String copy copies a string. C string from some source to some destination. Now it has something called string and copy, which is similar to map copy, except it's not bound by zero. Right. So in fact, it's going to terminate into the first zero that you see here in the source. But what does it do? It takes a character in memory and copies it to the message, and then terminates it in zero automatically. It, it inter interprets whatever address you put as the source as a string. And suppose it's just full of null bytes. Then that's the empty string, right? Mm -hmm. well, what is the empty string represented in what can you can see? Yeah. It's one null byte, right? So in fact, it will copy one null byte to the destination address. Mm -hmm. Which we is exactly what we want, right? Mm -hmm. ah. So hold on a second, we have some plan here. We're trying to tie together a number of things here. What do we want to do? So we want to do the system business, but really what we want to do, so we want set UID of zero and then system business heads. And the zero thing here, we're actually gonna to try to do like a string copy stack address number one, uh, some zero space, zero locations, zeros. Uh, and we're gonna do this four times, right? So we want to do this, and then that, and then that, and then that. So these are consecutive locations. And then set to ID, and it doesn't matter what we put in here because it's gonna get overwritten by zeros. And then we want to do system businesses. Wow, so we have a number of things that we want to kind of bundle together. <coughs> I think it's time for some code. And when we code, we have music, right? What's most annoying about the music? Uh, it's two things annoying about the music. If you don't like the music, yeah, tough luck. I know it's annoying. But the like, second thing is that YouTube has all this like, copyright protection stuff. It's like, hey, you used uh, 10 seconds from this song over here. Go to jail. <laughs> um, but that will give us a spin. And we'll maybe uh, adjust the volume a little bit. What's um, Coder's Essential Music? <laughs> Way to oversell. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what this is. Okay, so far so good. Okay, let's code a little bit. <laughs> that bad? Oh my god, okay, I see. Now I get it. Uh, we'll just fix it like this. Oh, well, it has some base in it. It's good. Good, okay, so we're coding. Um, so what are we going to try to do? We're going to try to attack the same program as before, right? And what was our program? We had a target thing. And uh, it happened to have a system, but a very unuseful system. And I had a set to it. Does it have string copy? Absolutely. So it should have all the things in place that we can kind of reuse in some way. <coughs> so what I'm going to be writing now is like an exploit. It's going to have so many addresses that it's going to be completely unwieldy, right? Unless I... 
up the game a little bit. So should we write this in some higher level language? Mm -hmm. It's a rhetorical question. I'm going to be writing this in a higher level <laughs> language, right? Because it's going to be very hard to do it without it. So let's just call it something. What's a good name for an exploit? Keep in mind that exp and exploit are both taken. Exploit two. <laughs> Door's right there. <laughs> okay. Any other suggestions? Tarquinius. The destroyer? Okay. Tarquinius. No, that's the line. Something else. Uh, lead. <laughs> lead, that's right. We have to get into the lingo, guys. Okay, so it's going to be, um, let's make it a Python program. And the Python program, we're going to import sys. Oh, everybody comfortable with Python? A few heads and then some rolling eyes. Very sleepy eyes also. Drowsy eyes. I don't know if that's a yes or a no then. Okay. Import struct. So we're going to have a little routine here that's going to help us with this whole addressing in little and stuff. Now, of course, in Python, there's some slick way of doing it. So we're just going to have, <coughs> what do we call this? Uh, it's called hex. No, hex is probably taken. Uh, adr. And um, let's take in an x here. And we're just going to return mm, struct.pack little endian of x. And maybe we can have an optional offset here. Uh, you can do it like this, right? <coughs> yeah. Let me just test this. So we always write test cases when we're doing stuff. So address of 4142434. And let's see if I can also then do it with an offset of 4. Arr. Arr. Double somewhere? Four. This is what I want, right? Uh huh. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Somebody confirm my existence. <laughs> good, okay, so, so this is a way for us to deal with the addresses. Now, what we're we trying to do, we're trying to make an exploit that um, is, consists of the following. We're going to try to do, we wanted to do system. Let's just draw this up here. The system, and then we wanted something, and then we wanted the bin SA string, right? But we want to set you at the somewhere. Where do we want to set you at the? Vertical system, so set you at the over here. And that has to take an argument, right? So the argument should be our so this is supposed to be something that gets changed, right? So we're going to change this one here to zero. Okay. Uh, what what more do we need? How are we going to change it to zeros? Yeah. So we need to string copy somewhere early on, right? So string copy. Uh, and how do we do string copy? What do we need for it? Source and destination. So do we need anything more before it? I need like something in between so that the arguments are right. And then destination and source. So now I have one, I have one string copy so far. Okay, and the AA thing, I have to figure out what, what, what I'm gonna do with it. But I have a string copy and a destination and a source. And what are the destination and source as far as we're concerned? One of the destinations like one of the X's and the sources. Yeah. Exactly. So destination is supposed to be um, stack address of first x, right? Because then we've overwritten one of these four x's over here to be a null. And then we can do that, and we can just call it destination one, because we probably need to repeat this sometimes, right? And what is source? Some place is a zero. Okay, and uh, what more do we need? <coughs> we need to do it several times, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even if we we're trying to do it just once, would this work? 
Yeah, I need to pop up red because I haven't cleaned anything up. So the AAs that I haven't determined yet, they need to be pop up red, right? Right? Otherwise, I'm stuck, right? So I do the string copy, I look at the arguments, and then I return, and what am I returning to? Pop up red. Pop up red gets past my destination, source, and then finally returns to the next thing on my chain. Okay? I'm seeing an extremely weak consensus here. Where did I lose you guys? Where did I leave you? Is the pop that the same as the WDP that we had before? Is the pop EDP that we had before? The pop EDP, oh yeah, so yeah, pop up right is going to then point to uh, some address with uh, instructions, pop L, doesn't matter, pop L, something else that doesn't matter, and then rest. okay? So it's going to somewhere executable with those three, right? With executable instructions. Okay, so we, there's a bunch of stuff we need to find now, okay? And then we have all our string copying system. But okay, we're not done, right? There's something more to it, right? No? We were going to call string copy four times. Four times. So we need to do this four <coughs> times, right? So we need this. I'm going to put a meta thing around this in here. I'm going to say this is like times four. Okay. And then four. Does that it It's true, but two things. String and copy takes an argument that itself needs to have an old byte. Because it needs to have the argument four, but it's a it's an integer, so it has four bytes in it. Um, so we can't provide those zeros. And second thing is that string and copy, even if you specify four, it's going to stop with the first null byte it sees. So it's only going to copy one. Mem copy would though. So in that sense, it would be good. But it's just the problem is the argument that you need to give it. But would it just if it has to put in four bytes and stops the first null byte, it has to yes put in the other three. So it doesn't fill in the three. It stops. Yeah. So it's up to four. Is what string and copy means. It's like no more than four, or no more than n, but up to n. Um, so we're going to need to do this four times. So we're going to need a whole bunch of addresses here. So how do we find the address of string copy? Object dump sounds good. Object dump minus, I guess, D of what? Target. Cool. Okay, well, hold this stuff here. I'm just going to grab here uh, string copy. Oh, hello. So here's the address of string copy in PLT. Okay. So we're just going to fill it. I'm gonna, just going to say that now <coughs> string copy is the address here. Okay. Cool. What else do I need? Yeah. Okay, so we need to find zeros. How do we find zeros? Yeah, how do how do that work? Memory search. So the elf scan thing, um, let me just show you. So Metasploit like opens up like something that opens up something that opens up Ruby and just like it takes it into the end of the universe to actually execute something. So just <coughs> bear with it. So let's see if we can try to find here uh, number of bytes. Well, notice this thing here. Oh, oh, I wonder why that's there. It's like somebody else came up with similar ideas in the past. Uh, cool. Well, we can do that. Let's just do it for fun. Target. Anybody for coffee? <laughs> well, Ruby finishes off. Oh, look! Ha! Isn't that convenient? <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's not so bad. Um, well, <coughs> is it? Something over its EPP over here. That would be a problem, wouldn't it? Hmm. This is not good. Let's try to see if there's something more here at our disposal. So let's do rub catching. 
Binary target. This thing here prints out everything that ends with return. Oh, and look here. Oh, wait. No, I didn't. That didn't quite work. This pops EBP as well. That's no fun. EBP, EBP. <gasps> uh oh. It's just not looking good, guys. Maybe we need to uh, abort. Oh dear. Push EX. That's not useful. So, what are some of the things we have in here? Let's see. So something to note, though, is that this is probably the smallest program you could make. And so the bigger the program, the better it is for exploitation. So right now we have a program that's just uh, <coughs> has 80 gadgets, which is a minuscule number. So I'm going to uh, cover your eyes, and I will make some modifications here to the program. GCC minus O. Target minus, don't optimize it at all. The target on C, and let's just make it 32 of it. And uh, we can omit frame point. I guess have no stack protector. Have no omit frame pointer. And let's make it static. <laughs> okay, how about now? So exciting. The music portrays the excitement so well. This is like lost in space existentialist kind of approach to excitement. Um. Oh, look, there were 10,000 all along. Of course, now what I need to do is that I <coughs> need to become root so I can give you guys root because I need this target thing to be also the higher level target here, and then to give it special permissions and special mode. So now, this higher level target over here is 600, 600k. This is a program that is like 10 lines and it's like 0.6 megabytes of code, because, you know, reasons. Uh, and like it runs as root. Okay, so resuming. We now go back in here, we can even ask our old friend MSF Elfscan to say like, hey, where are the pop-up rights here? And they will tell us... Oh, look! Wait, what? No! Oh, oh! <laughs> See? That wasn't so hard! <laughs> Actually, now that we've done this, let's just check where stream copy ended up, because... Chances are it's uh, somewhere else. Um, object. Um, what's that? What's that? <laughs> yeah. How about that? Oh, look, string copy. And it's in a totally different place because there's now 0.6 megabytes of crap. Uh, okay, so we're still lead. We still maintain that we're lead, right? Okay, string copy. Uh, actually, up the address. It's over here, but we found something more, something wonderful, something really cool. What did we find? We found a pop pop ret at this location that goes into registers that are not gonna really mess with us, right? Cool. So, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, so that's a pop up ret. Okay, what else do we need? This destination bit, we don't really know, huh? Because we don't know where things are. We can maybe end with that. But uh, what about the zeros? We're going to find zeros somewhere. GDB might be a good guess here. So let's go into GDB and actually run the program target here. Run it with like, some string over here. Oh, that's not very useful. Break, uh, so we're in main. Now we're in the program. How do I find zeros? What's a good candidate? Kind of EIP, you say? Uh, so far, it's all looking pretty rosy here. What other place in memory? Because it doesn't have to be executable. It just has to be any zeros anywhere. Where would be a place that would probably have a lot of zeros? 
Yeah, deep in the minds of Moria, right? It's like, let's go into the stack from here, and let's just subtract 2,000. Ha, 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 ha. Look, ha, ha, ha. I found an ocean. It's like a gold mine of zeros. I can pick anything here. So I'm going to pick this one, because reasons. Okay? Of course, we're always very careful that there's no notepad in our addresses. So that's going to be our zeros address here, and that's right here. This is our source of... Oh, wow, that's a little stuttery. Okay? What the, What more do we need? There are two more system calls we need. Yeah, how do I find those again? You can do GDB, it's a different way. GDB uh, target. This uh, system. Oh, here we go. That system right here. Okay. And so that system. Notice how I just put it into, oh, stop, into the background. So that's another Linux trick here. So GDB is still running. I just suspended it, and now I'll put it in the foreground. So FG puts in the foreground. Control Z, background. Jobs, hey, here are all the things that are in my background. Now I can also do something else. I can open up another GDB of uh, PinLS. And now I'm doing that, da 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 Control Z. And I have two jobs that are open in the background. Foreground job number one. Back in, oh, foreground job number one. And um, I'm back in here, and I can suspend. Really cool. And now I'm tired of the, of the world. I'm going to kill job number two. Look! It's like it never existed. Oh, wait. Uh, it'll die eventually. Here. I'm going to shoot it. Oh, look. It never existed. Okay. Foreground number one. Okay. We're on GDB. And I was disassembling the system. I'm still at the same place as before. What was the other system called again? Set UID. Good, okay, and that's also in a good place. So I'm gonna suspend that again. Uh, did all this nonsense. Okay, still lead. Set you ready, okay? So far we've done this amazing inventory, oh, come on. Inventory of <coughs> addresses. Things are looking rosy. What more? More, always more. We still need our destination. We're like kind of unsure about that. So I'm going to put him with something temporary in here. A little crass, but at least we can have a core file where we figure out what's going on. So it's a destination, and we still need the uh, business age, right? Now, how do we find that? I saw that there was something in this MSF elf scan over here that was but searching for a pattern. Did you notice that? Did the music? No, it's actually gone. Okay. Um, I want to search for. Uh, yeah, maybe not. Regex. Yeah. Can I do this? Target. To see what I can do. <laughs> so regex is just regular expression. So I can tell you, hey, I want to find this thing over here. Oh. Well, what do you know? <coughs> this address over here. So let's analyze this with GDB. Let's see what's at this address here. I'm just going to print the string. Well, will you look at that? Look what our tiny little binary of punctured megabytes contained. Somewhere in the fixed address of memory. It's our old friend, Binus Age. Ha! Huh. So we don't even have to shove it into our buffer, even though that would be fine. Right? Oh, so we got one more address, huh? Now, let's just put it in here. And uh, yeah, what, uh, what more do we need? Destination, huh? And it's not just one destination, it's actually four destinations, right? So now I want to somehow like get this all together. What do I, what do I write now? How do I get my shell code out there? Or like my rock chain? Just print it, but what is the chain? <coughs> ah. I've just defined like so many constants. This program currently does absolutely nil. What, uh, <coughs> how do I change that? I wanted to print something out to standard output, which is my, the thing I want to pipe into the program. Okay. So I could print something like 
a string copy. This is not a string, so right. Let's just see this work here. Python leak. Leak. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, fine. This is uh, the terminal responding to some of the special characters that I just printed out. It's kind of funny. It was like, what kind of terminal are you? I'm a putty. Right? So uh, it did that several times. Putty, 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 putty. Okay. Um, all right. So that worked. But I want to <coughs> print out some chain. What does my chain look like? <coughs> it's on the screen. Okay, yay. So can I do this? PPR? I'm just going to do a plus. Oh, let me uh, hex them. Sorry, XSD this out here. That's looking mighty good. Uh, what was it? Minus G1? Yeah. So this is what it prints out. So this is the inverted address of one, and inverted address of another. I think these are the right addresses. <coughs> we can confirm that. So let's have a look here. Um, so PPR, and then I guess I want... My destination, okay, but I want more than one destination, right? So I'm gonna change it a little bit. I'm gonna say uh, destination is this, and I'm gonna say address of destination, comma zero offset, okay? And then what we're what we're gonna do now? We wanted four of these somehow, right? Tell me what to do. Very likely. So source was zeros, right? Hmm? Yeah, I want to do it four times. So I could manually do it four times, or I could be like, ooh, I'm in Python. <coughs> Anybody want? <laughs> it's intelligent, but let's give it a little bit of a break here. How would it do this? Any Pythoners here? For I n. For I n. How do we do it in one line? So all the counts. Yeah. 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 Did I hear quote quote dot join of a list? Cool. Uh, and then yeah, there's the forward loop for you. Let's make this an I here for I in range four. Plus, what did I just do? I just effectively did the same thing as saying string copy PPR address destination zero plus zeros plus string copy PPR address destination one plus zeros plus and so forth, right? I just merged together several strings, okay? There are people who are staring at really odd objects in this room right now. Are you guys are all okay or what? Uh, no, so I've made a list here. This uh, this thing here is a list, and this is each element of the list is uh, is this string that contains these several addresses together, and my join thing here says like use this as a delimiter and join together every single element of this array. Let me just actually show you since maybe Python is not the first language for some people. Here's um. um Hello there, Flugel Dofo. Okay, so here's a little list. Okay, we're gonna call it A. And I'm just gonna type A, and I, I can also, I can say A plus yo. And it's just like, oh, that doesn't quite work. A dot append yo. I can add something to the list, and uh, now it's a longer list. If I do this dot join A, it takes every single element of the string and merges it together with the delimiter. I could also put a space here. And then it makes a sentence, right? It's really neat, very convenient, right? So that's what I have not done, okay? What what we have done, right? Yes? Yeah, it's good, okay? Um, so let's go back to it. So we've just joined together all the kind of things we need at the beginning, but we're still short of all the good stuff at the end. What do we need? Set ready. Set ready. <coughs> System. It doesn't quite really matter, does it? Let's just put something in there. Any ideas? What's a funny address? Dead beef. 
How original. Okay, dead beef. And then... Vin Zayz, that's right. Yes, good. Okay, okay, so we made an expert. We have no idea what we're doing, do we? Okay. Okay, let's just Python this and just see what happens here. Oh, okay, all sorts of stuff. Putty, 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 putty. Okay, and we're going to just try making this as an argument to our program. How do I do that? How do I make this into the argument for my program? You're drawing in the air. You can also speak. Zorro. Uh, you mean less than or, or greater than? Yeah, so you could pipe it, yeah. But that's piping into standard input. But this program here, if you look at this poor little target, even though it's 0.6 megabytes, it's trying to get an argument. So the first argument. So I, I want to do like hello, and this is the argument, right? So how do I make hello be the output of my program? We've only done this every class since we started here. Well, how do we do it? This notation here, I can say echo hello. Ah, look, it's the output of the program that I'm putting here. So what do I, what do we do? Oh, I can put the Python. What do we call our cool program? Lead. That's right. Uh, Hoodie. <laughs> um, it didn't even crash. Why didn't it crash? No zero. We didn't overflow it, we think, did we? We just chopped into a buffer of size 128, a bunch of garbage, and the program's going like, okay! <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you should check this guy out. Go out in the straight jacket, right? Probably we should at least trigger the overflow, right? Okay? So, how do we, tr how do we change elite to be a little bit more elite? Yeah. Okay. So, but the thing is that we're never going to execute this knob, so we can put whatever we want there, right? It, it actually doesn't matter. We don't use it at all. So we're just adding padding. How do I add padding? Cute drums. I can say hello and then add to my list. Instead of hello, what do I want? Do you guys remember how big the buffer was? Okay, we've now forgotten this. We've like, we were totally drunk last time. We had no idea what we were exploiting. So we're gonna hear in target. And we're gonna look at uh, what target sells. Um, so it's copy argument, I think. And we're hearing like, oh, it looks, that's, it looks so familiar because we've seen like 6,000 times now. So what, what's here? There's a string copy and there's some buffer that's been copied to. And it's of this notorious size over here. Anybody remember yet what OX88 is? Yes, it still is 136. That's right, cool. So how much padding do we need? So I could now painstakingly hold down A136 times. I can use, yeah, you can start with this. That's exactly right. So 136, and pick a character, guys. Please don't pick space or null. <laughs> Anything else is fine, okay? What? B. B, it is. There we go. Capital or lower? <laughs> Capital B, it is. Great, okay. Now we're looking a little bit better, okay? So we overflowed that stuff. But uh, we're forgetting something, aren't we? So after our 136 bytes, there is a, yeah, there's a frame pointer, right? Oh, let's just put something fun, fun into that frame pointer, just so that we have a little, it's like tagging our program. What do we put in the frame pointer here? What's another funny address? Hmm? Lead beef. Oh, I like that. Okay, we're doing one three three seven beef, right? <laughs> Kosher. Okay. Uh, so we've got some stuff in here. Oh, oh, it's circular. That's not surprising. But the question is, where did it start fully? What was it trying to do? Now we're going to face with some fun reconstruction needs to happen. And it needs to happen fast because we're running out of time here. String copy failed. What was string copy trying to do? <coughs> it was trying to copy to some weird addresses over here. 
in particular had this address edx and ebx and uh, it didn't like it why well, didn't it like it well let's see what's in the ebx uh x, that's an instruction let's do four bytes oh that's ebx okay that's no fun and then what's inside uh actually where are we something is going on here so we have our string copy and pop-up and so forth so here's the trick when you're trying to um when you're trying to debug this because yeah it will not work the first time it, it never does right unless you're like out of this world uh focused just change the addresses to something that is definitely going to crash trigger the crash where you want it and then let's um let's figure out how far we got okay so we're definitely getting into string copy and when we're in string copy what are the arguments that are going to get pushed off onto the on the stack here so let's look at evp here well that's a pity isn't it uh sorry stack pointer okay so that's an address over here and here's some of our stuff so eight away so so we just entered string copy right we just return into it so the next argument is going to be nonsense and then there's going to be the two arguments that we have so these are the two arguments do they make sense <coughs> something that doesn't quite make sense does it which one's the source yeah let's have a look at this here so the first argument should be destination, next one should be source. And what did we put in here? We put destination at this, and we did like an address of destination, and then the offset. I don't see anything like that here, do I? We have our pop-up red, which is this guy over here, that's 7A1D. So what's happening here? Pop up red destination. So what's if you pop up red address destination then zeros? And where are zeros? That's the CF fifty. So it seems like we're in a position where weird stuff is happening. Right? We're returning into a rogue. Oh wait, that's an old one. We're returning into string copy, the first one, and our chain. Let's just look at the chain of things that are coming ahead. It's a part of a wrap chain, and it's something funky, right? There's some null byte over here. Hmm. Could it be that we put in something that had a null byte in it? String copy of what? Source is zero. CF50. Something really weird happened, huh? So little by little, let us discover what happened. So instead of pop-up red, oh yeah, I think I know what happened. Do you see the thing I just highlighted? Does anybody know what the symbol is? OA. It's a new line. And when I did my dollar question mark, the string got interpreted as a new line, and so it doesn't become an argument. So it didn't copy the rest of my stuff, so it stopped. So we're actually in a in a position where our pop-up red is in a location that we don't like. So, what do we do? We can find another, or we can change it so that we're not using, so we're just, we're hard coding the arguments. So let's, um, uh, let's do it this way. Rob, gadget, and uh, you guys okay to stay a couple more minutes while we finish this off? I'll try to put on some really fast-paced music so that this is gonna happen really, really fast, okay? Uh, let's see. This is a little bit slow. What's what's fast here? Cyber or point uh, concentration? What's the most? Okay, we're getting a brain bug here. Brain bug nightmare. Da -da -da -da. Brain bug nightmare. That should be fast enough, right? Here we go. Brain bug nightmare. Original sinister remix. I don't want a sinister remix. It's for the real thing. That sounds good. There you go. Okay, let's do it. Okay, where are we? Where are we? We're here? Okay, we're gonna do this really fast. Okay, we're gonna do a rock gadget, uh, and we're gonna do... Uh, da, da, 
da, da. we're going to do MSF elf scan uh, minus pop up red of target and we're going to just look at what we find that's not in the address that we were dimming here faster faster okay so let's see if there's something in a different location somewhere okay we're going to the beginning here something that doesn't have EBP here we go EBX DSI this looks like a good address let's do it okay so we edit our program uh, pop up red is now at the different location go this out here you know there are competitions for this right um, python here we go okay so now it should have crashed the same location but not as not as bad actually uh, so gdb dot slash target 2159 okay so let's look at what we have on the stack here esp okay this is looking a lot more a lot better right this is what we put in there. So let's just see what happens if we just proceed. Of course, what should happen if we proceed is that we should, um, maybe it's a little bit intense here, uh, is that we should be trying to overwrite this destination because this destination is wrong, okay? So what we'll do is to say 0805, this is the original test for circuit copy. Go in here, let's look at the latest core file, target uh, core 2209. And we're trying to probably write to our x pc uh, We're trying to write to address uh, etx epx. So here's where we're trying to write, and that's exactly right. We're trying to write to the base of 4142 something. Okay. So we're going to need to change it to something that's on the stack. Where are we on the stack? Well, where is the stuff that we wanted to modify? Okay, we're not there yet. I think the last one over here, dead beef. That's what we want to overwrite, right? So that bit is at this address. So we're just gonna update our destination here. Let's say destination is actually this guy here, okay? So now let's try the target thing again. <laughs> Mysteriously that worked, right? But I didn't get any privileges, why not? It's because it didn't run the one that had privileges. Ha ha ha! Cool, huh? We just made our first raw exploit. Guess what's gonna be in one of the homeworks? That's right. Cool, huh? Awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for staying late.